Well, what's going on, builders? Welcome back to yet another awesome episode. So in this episode, we are working with a ZoomEd 18 by 18 by 24 tall glass cage. This is actually for my personal collection. You can see me here removing the top and also the door. And I know there's a lot of conflict online about this, but it makes working with these cages so much easier when you remove the doors. So I do it every time. So this cage is actually gonna be for a crested gecko that I just took in. Uh, my apprentice for venomous snakes, his cousin is actually moving and she couldn't take it with her. So I figured it would be a great animal for display here at the zoo. Now using a piece of universal rock here, I'm actually using a fillet knife or deboning knife, whatever you'd like to call it, to cut it down to size. It's a little bit too long. The width is absolutely perfect, but these are, uh, very, very tough to cut if you do not know already, but this knife makes it super easy because they're actually super sharp. So now that it's cut down to shape, it's time to place it in there to see kind of if you want it upside down or upside right, which technically there's no right or wrong way to do this, but I'm playing with it a little bit, taking steps back, looking at it, see which one I like best. I actually did end up flipping it around. You'll see here in a second. Um, I like ledges and I like to plant things on ledges if you don't already know. So I figured this has a nice little ledge in it and I could possibly plant something there in the future. So now that we got the shape of it perfect to match the tank, we're gonna take a thick bead of silicone. And I do mean thick because you want it to get stuck to that back piece of universal rock and it is not flat. Doing about one third of the tank, then taking the piece of universal rock and sticking it back in the tank. Now this part is tricky and a lot of people have difficulty with this, but my best option or opinion I can give you is get a sandbag for universal rock because it covers it and it's heavy to flatten it out. So once that first half is nice and dry after about two to three hours, you can go ahead and pull back the bottom half and start siliconing that as well. Getting again a lot of silicone so you have lots of points of contact between the silicone and the universal rock and then going ahead and putting that sandbag on there. Make sure you flatten it out as much as possible. So funny story, I'm actually building this cage out of a lot of leftover materials that I have. Like these two pieces of cork bark, I'm actually gonna be putting them together to make a bigger branch to fit into the cage. Now by simply sliding together, obviously it's not enough. So I'm actually gonna be then taking some great stuff, pond and stone, I live by this stuff, and filling in the inside for two reasons. One, to bond the two pieces together, and two, so that the crested gecko can't get in there and hide. Now this first piece that I'm actually going to be putting in here is a weird shaped cork round piece, but it actually has a big hollow hole on the inside. So I figured this would be a really good spot for the crested gecko to actually go ahead and hide in during the day, seeing as it is a nocturnal gecko. Now something I also started doing is why the silicone is wet when I hear certain pieces to the glass or the background. I'm actually then going ahead and taking the substrate that I'm using for the side walls for this enclosure and putting it around it just because it makes it a lot easier to do it now than to go back and redo it later. So this is actually one of the Zilla feeding platforms for the crested geckos or some other animals that can use it as well. This is the big mushroom style. Um, I don't use the suction cup on this. I'm just adding a bunch of silicone. I know it looks like a lot, but again, I want it to kind of excrete out the sides so then I can go ahead and add the bedding to it after I push it down. So I'm actually placing this right next to the hide. So if he wakes up and he's hungry, he can come out and get some food. And here in a little bit, I'll be putting a branch underneath it as well so he can crawl around to it. So 
So far, so good. I'm really enjoying the way this cage is coming out. So here is the branch from earlier that we put together. As you can see, it's nice and bonded. I did actually take off the excess foam as well. Yeah, looks like one big branch. I like it a lot. Now taking this big branch, we're actually gonna lay it across the whole cage there and use some Great Stuff Pond and Stone to get it to stay in place. Now the reason why I'm doing this and I'm just speeding this up is because after about five minutes, believe it or not, this stuff is strong enough to hold this branch up. So we let it sit there, I hold it in place, let it cure for about five minutes and then finish letting it cure for the next hour and then I can simply take my hand off and we can move forward. So now with the other side, I'm just gonna simply take some silicone and squirt a bunch in there. And then once I get it in there, we can go ahead and add some of the substrate as well. The foam is nice and fully cured. We can go ahead and carve it back a little bit. Now I want this to look kind of like a continuation of the branch. So I cut off all the excess that was sticking around it. All right, now it is time for the messy fun part. Well, it's not really fun, but it is messy. So using a GE silicone one, all-purpose silicone, uh, I prefer the black over the clear. Uh, just using a glove, spreading it out, um, trying to make sure you get every inch of glass you possibly can. Then taking the substrate. So the substrate we're actually using for this build is called fern fiber. You can get it in a shredded bag like this one here, or you can get it in panels that range in size, usually six inches wide uh, by, I think you can get like 12 inches tall or 15, all the way up to, I believe, 18 inches tall uh, panels of this stuff, which this stuff is really good for geckos. Now, the reason why I'm going with this stuff over the peat moss or sphagnum moss is the simple fact that the toe pads for the geckos can stick to this stuff where with the peat moss, they have difficulty sticking to that particular substrate when you put it on the walls. So for geckos, it's best to use this stuff or even dry lock, which we will go over in future videos. So this big bad boy right here is actually a five inch net pot. Now I'm doing this one a little bit off the ground in the back using some great stuff pond and stone to kind of seal it into place. Uh, the reason why I'm going with the great stuff instead of just putting the silicone over it is because I want it to kind of make it look like it's basically blending into the wall. So after the foam cures, we can go ahead and put the substrate over it. But this is a nice big pot. You can put a bigger plant in these. I believe they come in three inch and also five inch with the net pots. I have both of them, I've used both of them, but the five inch I think is really awesome because you can, like I said, upgrade your plant size and put a bigger plant higher up in the cage. Also wanted to add another branch as well, one kind of going to the ground for the isopods and the springtails to hide up in if they wanted to. So I actually packed this bad boy full of sphagnum moss and then I'm just kind of trying to figure out where exactly I want to adhere it to the glass basically and then have it perched up as well. So doing a lot of silicone here. I know it looks like a lot, but trust me, it's not. Just simply letting it sit and taking a little bit of extra silicone putting it around the connection area and then adding the substrate right after.
But hey, so far so good. I really like the way this one is turning out. And then of course, as I was filming this, I realized, oops, I forgot to do the top half. So since this is actually going to be one of my personal cages going on display here at my zoo, I actually like to cover up the side by the door with black out tint. Now the reason why is because these guys all sit on a wood rack that will eventually be faced with universal rock panels. So you can't really see the wood, but you can see the wood through the glass on just the side by the door. So I cover up about two inches in, even though that's a little excessive, and just cut off the extra. Now after getting the tank installed on the rack, we're gonna go ahead and start the substrate layer. So first using a bio sponge, I'm using three pieces that were left over from previous builds to do the base in this particular cage. Next, we're adding our weed block, which is basically to keep the substrate itself off of the bio sponge. So I always cut it a little bit bigger than the bottom of the enclosure. This way it kind of catches it on the sides as well. This one turned out to be a little bit more difficult than expected just because of this branch is kind of pushing down into the bio sponge, but it's okay. Now we're adding our substrate. So this is my custom made substrate, which I actually will be doing a video on this next. So I can link these up in the time card. So make sure you stay tuned after this video to learn how I make my substrate, but spreading it all around, make sure I push it all in the corners so that it doesn't fall beneath the weed block, basically just using it to hold up the corners at first. And then we can go ahead and start building our base layer of substrate. So now that all the substrate's in, it's time to start planting. So this first plant I'm putting in that five inch net pot is a bird's nest fern. Now this guy we're putting way in the back wall because there's nothing actually above him here. These guys get about 18 to 20 inches tall. So it's a perfect spot for him to grow nice and big. Now this is a philodendron McCoy's vinyl. Now these guys do really good in low light, so I'm kind of putting him in a corner where he's got like half light, half shade, but I think this guy will grow in and look really nice in this spot. This next one is a creeping fig. I use this in a lot of builds because it covers the walls nicely and it grows quick, but this is an awesome vining plant for most animals. So this is actually a plant kit off of Josh's Frogs for Crested Geckos. But now that we got everything planted, we're going to go ahead and just give it a good spray down. Now adding the springtails and also the isopods. So the isopods I am putting in this are the orange Dalmatians. So they're an all white isopod and as they get mature, they actually have a orange spotty pattern.
Now on to the leaf litter. I'm actually using northern oak leaves here, um, only because it was the last couple ones I had in a bag and I wanted to get rid of it. And then topping it off with some southern oak leaves as well, uh, just because the isopods really tend to like these southern oak leaves over some other types of oak leaves or leaves in general. And then also adding some different seed pods as well, just some different types throughout the cage, just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Well, that's it. I mean, this cage I think is gonna look phenomenal once everything starts really growing in. Should take about a month or two, but after a couple days I decided to put this cute little guy in here. Just simply letting him step up. Awesome little crested gecko. Don't really know what type he is, but hopefully he enjoys his new home. That's it for this video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Remember like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next build as always. Stay tuned, the next video is going to be how I make my substrate. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll catch you in the next one.